In our first video, we discussed rudimentary basics when it comes to doing the Dirty Dancing Lift. It was our first video we ever made and we've come a long way since then. In this video, we're going to discuss more in detail what to do and what not to do when learning this lift. This is our Dirty Dancing Lift Tutorial 2.0. Couple of basics to remember, the real name of the Dirty Dancing Lift is in fact the Swan and is originally a ballet lift. But the lift has been made famous by the movie Dirty Dancing, hence we all call it the Dirty Dancing Lift. First thing you need to do is train your couple physically for what they need to do. The flyer needs to practice her swan position on the floor. Do this by laying on your stomach, then arching your back so your entire body is off the ground. At this point, only your pelvis should be touching the floor. Once in this position, practice your balance as though the floor would be the base's hands. For the base, start with a couple of push-ups, both bench and incline press, overhead extensions with the arm past your ears and your back straight, crunches and squats. Both bench and incline press should be practiced by the partners together. It helps build trust and it gives you a better understanding of how to work together. The acro grip is very difficult to explain without showing you and you need to do this for incline press. Mimic this position and make sure your wrist bends at exactly 45 degrees, no more, no less. The squats are paramount. You need to be comfortable in a deep squat since you will need this position to start the lift. It is recommended to train your squats for two weeks before you start trying this lift if you are not already athletic in your daily life. Make sure you do a light stretch because you will need to extend your muscles when the flyer is overhead. Have the flyer position her or himself behind the base in this fashion. Then gently pull the elbow of the base next to his or her ears. Do this gently but also firmly while using your legs to help immobilize the torso of the base. Don't let the base go to any direction. His spine should be straight up. This is to train the flexibility of the base's rotator cuff. When first learning this lift, do it from a static position. You're going to want to take your hands and place the palm of your hand on the flyer's body in a way that the center of the palm is cupping the hip bone of the flyer. If your flyer has exceptionally long legs or short legs, this position could vary. Put the hands slightly lower if your flyer has long legs, place your hands slightly higher if the flyer has short legs. In the film, Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze do the lift with a running start and Jennifer keeps her arms fanned out in a graceful position, but this is not how you learn the lift at first. Once the base's hands are in position, half the flyer grab hold of the base's wrists and lock them in place. With both partners in position, half the leader count down. The base makes that deep squat we talked about earlier, while the flyer should do a modest squat while slightly leaning towards the base. She should now jump as hard as she can and do a swan dive over the base. The original lift is also called a swan. Irony. Because the base's hands are actually tabletops and he is not gripping the flyer's body, it is important that the flyer uses her upper body strength to force the base's hands in position. You should keep applying this force until you are balanced in position overhead. Only then should you release your grip and assume the pose. This is especially true in the early stages of learning this lift. The base should attempt to use as much of his leg strength as possible and his back as little as possible. Keep your back straight, keep your abs engaged, then press the flyer by extending your arms straight up past your ears, only just slightly spotting the flyer by glancing upwards, not by tilting your neck. From the moment this lift begins, the flyer needs to engage her core. For the entire duration of the lift, her core must stay engaged. Never fall forward or let your legs dangle down. Once high up, try to move as little as possible, since the base is already making small adjustments to keep you in balance. If you move too much, the base won't know what to do and you will probably fall. When placing the base's hands on the flyer's body, remember to platform your hands in a tabletop manner, keeping the palms flat on the flyer's body. Gripping the flyer's body is a big mistake. If you place your hands in this fashion, your thumbs will be jamming into the flyer's torso. 
causing all but the most fantastic flyers a lot of discomfort. It also requires rock climber strength for the base to do it in this way. So platform the hands along the flyer's body. Do not bend your back. A big mistake bases make is to lean over, curving their back. This puts almost all the strain on the base's back. The reason the base usually does this is because they try to relocate some of the pressure from their deltoids to their upper pecs. But you really have to force yourself to use your deltoids since changing your physical position to use your pecs will simultaneously mean straining your back. The other reason a lot of bases look up is because they try to keep the flyer in their visible sideline. Looking up at the flyer is good to spot your flyer should something go wrong. But instead of trying to face your flyer by bending your back, instead try glancing up with your actual eyes while keeping your face leveled. The last reason bases bend their back is because of rotator cuff mobility. In order to press your arm straight past your ear, your rotator cuff needs to point directly upward, which is not the easiest thing to do. When the flyer is stretching the base's rotator cuff, check to ensure the bicep is indeed at the backside of his own ear while his back remains straight. If you see the base's back hollow out when you pull his arm up, the flexibility is not there yet, and you should train that gently every day with stretching before you start doing this lift. Remember that the base must always squat below the flyer. The squat is a lot deeper than most people realize. You have to keep your back straight while simultaneously being level-eyed where the flyer's body and the base's hands are in contact. Of course, this can vary depending on height difference, but for most people, this should be the rule. This is also one of the main reasons why practicing this lift in the water is such a bad idea. For water to even have any effect where safety is concerned, the water needs to be above the hip level of the flyer. This means that when the base squats down to get his eye level in position, he will be 100% emerged in water. Another big deal is the micro steps. If you look here, you'll see the base make small steps and lean back and forth slightly. This is done to help counterbalance if the flyer accidentally leans too far forward or backwards. Now add water to the mix with current and soft sand or worse, sharp rocks underneath and it becomes very clear very quickly that doing this lift in the water is a bad idea. And we have not even stated the obvious yet. Let's say you do in fact do this lift in the water perfectly. Water still makes skin slippery. It's liquid and moves all over, meaning it changes the balance of the lift, especially if the flyer's hair is wet. This also makes the flyer heavier. The surrounding water limits the amount of force the base can exuberate on the flyer. And finally, when the flyer exits the water, it's not like the flyer leaves all that water behind. She takes a lot of that water with her. Then when she is dangling overhead, that water starts dripping on the base's head. More importantly, his eyes, compromising his sight. So doing the lift in the water is a terrible idea. Fun, but terrible. If you want to do this lift in the water because it's a warm summer day and you and a friend or partner want to reenact the scene from Dirty Dancing for awesome summer beach pictures with a stunning sunset in the background, that's a totally different story and you should definitely do that. Just practice the lift in a proper training facility first, then go out and do it on the beach after. And that is our follow-up tutorial on the Dirty Dancing lift. Let us know how you did by tagging us at CircuitOfficial. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If there is something we missed, after all, we're not perfect, or there is another lift you would like to see a tutorial to, leave us a comment in the sections below. Thank you for watching our video. I am Marike. And I'm Javed. And we'll see you next time.